Yeah, hello there. I was working on a solo album, my first solo album. Project name is Mossifier and the album will be called Project Kite. And I thought, why not do a deconstruction uh, of a song on an album? And I picked the song Tiefe, which means uh, the deep. And it's the only song on the album with German lyrics, but that's not the reason why I picked it. I picked it because it shows quite a bit how I work in the last time and how I approach uh, writing songs and yeah I, I thought I can show you uh, a bit how I do that and maybe yeah, I guess you learn some new things uh, on the way yeah what, what you see here I always put stuff in groups so we have uh, drums group space group keys and vocals and I think that's always uh, good to have it like this uh, to have an overview and I always choose the same color so drums are always blue bass is always red keys are in this uh, orange tone and vocals are purple color so when you open a project you always feel at home and know uh, what you're doing yeah how did the song start out uh, it started out with a jam on my modular system which i tend to do to get some kind of creativity because it always gives you weird effects and if you just listen a bit to that so this jam started out like this and turned into something like this So a bit of modular drums and a single monophonic kind of not really bass but effecty, uh, lots of filter, not uh, fiddling around and a little bit running through the Merc, which is a distortion module and so it gets a little bit of a crunchy sound as well and that's, that's basically what there was. So wh what can you do with such a jam? And uh, I, I first wanted to get a, a little more of a steady beat to it. So I had a very straight sequence bass, which was coming from the Matrix Brute, but I guess such a sound you can do with any kind of analog simulation plugin. So nothing too fancy. And it also just uses, here's uh, the, the, the original track, so it uses the, the default Bitwig Apeciator. And as I showed in a previous video about uh, templates, I always have templates ready for my external gear. So the Matrix Brood is also happening here via a hardware instrument. So it's very easy to uh, mix it down like it did here and you get then the audio to work it. So that's also a tip maybe that always uh, put stuff into audio so you don't have to worry how it sounds the next day, especially if you work with external gear. So if you listen to both parts, you hear it's already more straight feeling to it. And we have a basic beat going as well. And um, then I thought, oh, this is very, very electronic, but I wanted to have a kind of live feeling for it. So what I did, I was playing live drums to it. And I did that here on my Roland drum kit. So electronic Roland drums. And this has this TD20 module. And if you listen to that, it sounds like this. Here the sound is not too impressive and it sounds a little bit like electronic drum kit and this was not the sound I was after. I wanted to have more the sound of a really fat live drum kit. So what I also did, I also recorded the MIDI data also coming from via the module and then put that MIDI into a contact. So it's a native instrument studio drums, which I like quite a lot and they sound like this. So a little bit more realistic, but uh, if you listen, compare it to the TD20, uh, a little bit thin, and, but if we just do both, we get really nice fat drum kit. But if you do things like that, if you layer drum kits and drum sounds, it's always very dangerous to get just mud at the end. So it's always a bit of fiddling around here with the frequency. So as you see here on the studio drums, I removed the bass. So the, the, the kick drum is more coming from a TD20, but also I did some adjustment here on uh, the bass area of the, of the drum kit. So always be careful with that. And the mix here on the drums, I always use press work which is from German Yuhi company and I love the Yuhi plugins a lot. It's just a little bit of compression here that's going on and what I always put on drums is the Satin which is a tape saturation plugin. There I always use this preset kick 
as fat drum bus it's really nice and you can check out that if you're just having this here running in this loop there's a loop on okay so we have just running that in the loop and if you see we turn out the compressor and we turn out satin bit of compression and then satin So setting makes it uh, much richer and more into your face and uh, adds a nice bit of warmth to it as well. And Neutron is just a bit of more EQ and a little bit of more compression going on and a little bit of excited to bring out the brilliance in the upper part, so nothing too fancy. So the main ingredients here are these two, which I always stick on drums and if we listen to that together, you will have already be the have the part of the song. And then there are some gimmicky stuff like here in this uh, breakdown section there is a I let's go here the, the bass drum was a little bit too thin for my taste because it should still sound electronic so I added this big woomph also from my modular drums, but you could have used any plugin which simulates such an analog drum. And there we go. What else do we have? We have some effects here in the beginning. This is a nice effect sound, also <laughs> just a preset from Cog M3. I yeah, I think it's from the Cog M3, but I'm not fully sure. Where I pick that, I tend to forget that, but it's really not important. That's why you should always put everything record as audio and then you can just forget what you did before. Um, so much for the drums and, and the bass. Uh, what do we have here with keys? There is this intro section which adds just a bit. It's, it's also from the same multi preset. It's also beyond the cosmos here. FX uh, part of this Cog M3 preset. And there are some bell sounds which I always took from M3. Nothing too fancy, but in the mix it's really nice. Uh, that's the same, a bit louder. And yeah, then we have a choir. This is a nice choir from a Mellotron. And Mellotron sounds always tend to be very, very harsh. So I have lots of reverb on that one. Maybe we can switch here to the mix view. So mix, 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 where are we here really? So you see, I drowned it in Valhalla room. So Valhalla reverb, this is also my absolutely favorite and go-to for reverb. I stopped using reverb for quite some time until I got the Valhalla plugins. They have several, also some are free, so you should definitely check them out yeah that's the basic parts uh, so we're just left with the vocals and the vocals uh, there are two fold one is uh, this kind of verse part and then we have kind of a chorus which is more like yeah let's really listen to it so what I do here is uh, I have Melodyne on vocals to fix some off-pitch stuff. Um, this is something, it's a bit hard to work in Bitwig with Melodyne because you have to record it into the plugin and then you will not see the, your changes in the curves. So this is a bit of a problem. For example, if you see here, uh, this looks as if the length would be different here, but I fixed that in Melodyne. You can see I lined them up so you can change the length. So they have the choir really on spot here in the end but this will not reflect here in uh, your your curves uh, in, in Bitwig and also if you I would now cut it up and move it it would still play the recording in the plugin and this is can be very confusing so you need to be careful with that and use it at the latest possible time when you mix so you're sure you will not change it afterwards so if you want to change the arrangement afterwards it's a bit tricky so it will really it would be great if ARA uh, so this interface uh, technology for Melodyne, this would be really nice to have that here too in Bitwig. But we can live with that as well for the time being. Yeah, I wanted to make sound a little bit dangerous and uh, dark. So for that task, I like to use the vocal synth here and it gives you lots of effects. So again, if you 
If we listen to that. And then I add vocals into it with basically lots of stuff enabled. So it's a vocoder, a talk box, and the poly box which gives you multiple copies of your voice. And one of them I pitch down so you get this deeper sound. That's a really cool plugin because you have all those different manipulation ways you, you have nowadays and you can mix them together and as you prefer. Just listen also to the choir here. Also with a bit of distortion on it to make it sound a bit more warm. Sounds not that interesting uh, if you listen to it in solo function, but in the mix you don't hear the distortion and it just sounds a bit warmer. Yeah, so much for the tracks. Um, what I put on a master, I put another satin, uh, which we already had on the drums uh, for, for the master. So this gives also a bit more warm and there is also this master bar thick and warm, which is a really nice uh, preset setting for that as well. And then I use an Oso 9 to get uh, of the loudness, but don't overdo it. So it's still okay. And what they also have is this tone balance checker, which gives a kind of impression if your dynamic range is okay compared with other mixes so here you see uh, what is your low frequency mid high and, uh, and high mid and, and high and this is a uh, normal ranges for comparable music uh, there are also different presets you can say bass head bass heavy country edm whatever you're going for and uh, then you see is your mix compared to these other mixes quite okay or not so much for the rundown um it would be great if you check out my new album coming up on the 6th of December called Mossy Fire Project Kite. And yeah, tell me if you want to see more videos like this getting into parts of songs. And yeah, make some funky music.